back in the 80s, um, and, and I don't think Dr. Squire has told this story, but um, transplant was really the only, end, uh, only treatment for patients um, with this end-stage liver disease. Um, and there was no, there was really no way besides just giving medicine to help with itching um, that, that patients um, with these diseases could, could, could kind of go on or be treated in any way. Um, but there was a patient, a bowel obstruction, and the right physician in the right place at the right time. And so um, a patient with Bilers, P1, um, was in the hospital and conveniently for us, but not conveniently for them, had a bowel obstruction. Um, and they placed a tube into that person's stomach, um, which drained bile from their intestine. Um, and what was noted over time was that with the NG tube, with the nasogastric tube that was draining this, the itching went away. Um, and as soon as that tube and the bowel obstruction got resolved, um, good for the patient, um, but the bowel obstruction got resolved um, and the patient's tube came out and the itching came back. Um, and so was the first thought of maybe there is a way um, to get rid of the itching um, by way of getting rid of the bile from the, the, the intestine. And so if the, if the bile is not making it to the intestine, um, may, maybe, maybe we can get rid of a lot of these problems. And so, you know, if we can stop this um, absorption of the bile salts from the terminal ileum, maybe we can get rid of a lot of the disease. Um, and so there's only a smaller amount of bile salts that are absorbed. Um, and therefore, the accumulation in the liver is down. Uh, the accumulation in the blood is down, uh, the itching goes away, um, and the liver damage is hopefully decreased. Um, and so there's, there's many ways to do this. Um, there's many ways to get a, a, around this terminal ileum. And so you could drain um, the bile duct with a tube. Um, and that's what was initially done. And so the, they, they put a tube from the nose all the way up into the bile duct. Um, hard to maintain, hard to actually use. Um, and they found that indeed it did work. Um, the next step is to maybe, hey, maybe we can connect the gallbladder to the side of the body. And so that is, that is done um, in many different diseases, but it's the actual a direct connection um, has a lot of long-term problems, but short-term um, certainly seem to help. Um, the other way to drain the bile out from the gallbladder is to connect the gallbladder to a small piece of bowel and bring it out to the abdominal wall and have it drain into a bag. The other thing that you can do um, is to drain the bile from the gallbladder instead of out of the body, um, drain it into the colon. Um, and so you could bypass the ileum. Um, bile would go from the liver into the gallbladder and then from the gallbladder into the colon and not, not ever see the ileum. And then the other thing you can do is divert all flow from the ileum. And so you take a piece of the intestine um, and you put it directly to the colon. And so these are all over the course of, of years have kind of become the standard um, different procedures. Uh, there's a nice cartoon here of them. Um, and so the partial external biliary diversion um, is really the oldest um, and the best studied. And so there's a small piece of intestine, this is A. Um, there's a small piece of intestine um, here um, that drains the gallbladder. And so bile comes from the liver um, comes down into the bile duct, goes into the, it goes into the gallbladder, and then goes out to, out to the body wall um, into a bag. Um, the next kind of oldest um, would be the ileal exclusion. And so instead of um, flow uh, of, of, of intestine fluid and bile salts making it to the, in, uh, to the ileum, it just goes directly to the colon. Um, and then kind of a, a newer um, kind of secondary way to do this is to, to drain the gallbladder either directly into the colon or with a short piece of intestine to the colon um, so, so, it, so it only goes to the colon. And so in all of these, the, the, last, the first one I couldn't put a little circle, but in all of these um, bile salts, all of the fat soluble vitamins never hit the ileum and therefore um, our, our, our dramatically amount of absorption is dramatically decreased. And so a cartoon of a you know, a um, partial external biliary diversion is here. The bile salts go down. Some bile salts make it to the intestine. Um, many, most of them go out uh, through, the, through the stoma. Um, and then lot less bile salts are absorbed. Um, and this is kind of a, a better cartoon. And again, these are 
um, this is by far the, the best studied um, this is this this type of surgical diversion um, is, is the, you know and we'll talk about the studies in a, in a minute or two. Um, this is the one that really is is kind of the gold standard to compare to. It's also the gold standard that the IBAT inhibitors and all of the the drugs that that are being developed um, kind of compare themselves to in 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 their studies. Um, and so we looked at um, a multi-center um, study. Um, and so this is uh, this is all all of the the groups or many of the groups in the, in North America that were performing um, biliary diversions. Children's Hospital Pittsburgh is just one of them. Um, and so we tried to see the results of this. And so if you look at patients that have FIC, PFIC one um, or Bilers disease, um, you can see that there's actually a, a very good um, response of bilirubin. And so if you look at at, at PEBD is the partial external biliary diversion. And if you look at patients when they, when they first had this done, um, their initial bilirubin was eight. Um, and over the course of a year or two, um, their bilirubin dropped down to, to, to kind of the two level. Um, similarly, a lot of the other, um, a lot of the other numbers uh, that you see were, were normalized. The IE is, uh, is, is ileal exclusion. Um, and those, there's very few of those performed comparatively. Um, and I think, you know, the number that pops out in, into everyone's face is, is the 734 in the, in the right lower bottom of that. Um, I think a lot of those um, uh, external, you know, um, ileal exclusions, it can be a one-off number um, that, that really skews your results. And I think that that is, that is fair to say that, you know, that 734 was probably not, um, you know, it shouldn't be included in there. But Again, I, I think that the numbers of ileal exclusions um, done for these diseases is so low that it's hard to, to really um, use them for, for meaningful data. Um, when you look at the, the reason that, that, that kind of the, these, these diversions are done is the pruritus. And so, you know, the patients are itchy. Um, um, these are patients that have FIC1. And again, this is multi-center. Um, if you look at them, most of the patients got better. And so preoperatively, most of the patients had severe itching. And, and, and there's a, this is a classification, there's a, there's a really old classification that, that Dr. Whittington, the guy on the, from the picture, um, came up with. And, and really, these patients had severe itching. They were, they were mutilating um, itching. Um, they were on multiple medications that, could not, um, that, that would not really help. Um, and by the end of the study, um, uh, most of the patients actually improved as far as pruritus goes. Many of them were not, were still on medications for itching, um, but the medications were at least effective. Um, and so the conclusion of the multi-center study, it's a multi-center analysis of, of non-transplant approaches. Um, it's not uniformly successful. Um, they're well tolerated. Um, they do get pruritus and cholestasis improvement. And again, this was prim primarily geared toward patients that have bilers or PFIC1. Um, when you look at the the different types of PFIC that were studied. Well, there are 18 patients in this study that were PFIC2 or BSEP disease. Um, and, and when you look at, at, at that group, the results really weren't as satisfying. Um, and so the, the bilirubin, although it did not start that high, really didn't change much. Um, and the pruritus, um, again, is similar to that. Um, the pruritus didn't really change too much. Um, and so if you look at BSEP disease, that's PFIC2 on the right. And again, I, I'm, I'm with Jim. I, I, I have a hard time even keeping track of PFIC1, PFIC2, PFIC3, and I get scared as, as more get added. So I, I, I would tend to call it FIC1 and BSEP disease. Um, but the, the, as you can see, the, the patients that, that came in, although their itch was better controlled, um, it wasn't as, as, as reliably controlled as patients that have PFIC1. Um, and and the, the, the graph itself is a little bit misleading. The numbers in, in that graph are actually the numbers of patients that were scored. Um, and so you can see, you know, in, in the, for, the, for the BSEP disease, five patients had severe itching, five patients had uh, moderate itching um, when the study was started. Um, by the end of the study, only, only five patients responded instead of 10. And so it, it's hard to tell um, meaningfully what, 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 what these numbers mean. Um, but, you know, even with that, uh, I, I would say that the, the results of biliary diversion, um, external, internal, regardless of the type, um, is a little less predictable um, when you move away from patients that have um, PFIC1. Um, and then when you look at the need for eventual transplant in patients with these diseases, um, many patients needed a transplant um, that had PFIC2 or BSEP disease. Um, 
and so the the results uh, uh, there were not as 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 promising um, as patients that that had 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 PFIC one. Um, unfortunately, there is a limitation of a retrospective multicenter data, you know, multicenter study, and the the reason the patients were transplanted um, w was not really included. I'm part of the study, uh, which which makes it um, embarrassing to say it. But the the reasons for the transplant were not were not included, nor was the the time from the diversion to transplant. Um, and again, it's it's an it's it's just the nature of a retrospective multicenter. Um, one patient did die during the follow up period, um, and again, it wasn't recorded. Um, but we can discuss that in a little bit. Um, 